episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, this afternoon, um, well, it's a first. Um, I think I've done 300 odd episodes and um, I've certainly not done Port Ellen and um, this will probably be the last time I ever do Port Ellen. Um, basically, I was I thought, well, this week let's go back to the A to Z of, uh, of Scottish distilleries. And I, and I thought, where are we up to? We did Port Dundas, I think, as P. And I thought, well, okay, so Royal Brackler, um, Royal Loch Nagar, they're, they're, they're the R. So I was digging in the boxes and I don't seem to have any samples uh, of uh, Royal Loch Nagar and only a handful of uh, Royal Brackler, three in actual fact, but well, I'm pretty certain there's some more knocking around somewhere, but they weren't in the box marked Royal Brackler, I can tell you. But what was in the box marked for Royal Brackler was Port Ellen. And um, yes, indeed, many, many years ago, um, independent bottling companies would indeed send me samples of Port Ellen. I mean, I think I think I've got more chance of um, of, of losing my right arm than the, um, getting samples of Port Ellen from any independents, given the uh, uh, astronomical price that it goes for these days. And um, it's it's a shame, I suppose, that that you know a lot of you probably won't get the opportunity to taste Port Ellen because it was a unique Isle of Whiskey, has to be said. And although as far as I'm aware, certainly in the time it was owned by DCL or um, Diageo uh, from about what was it 1920 odd, uh, it certainly didn't release any distillery bottlings of its of its malt. I mean, it wasn't a particularly big distillery. I think its output was only something in the region of uh, 1.7 million liters a year, and it just all went for blending. It was all going for the you know for use as a, the peated element in a number of different uh, different blends so um come the uh, the, the the sort of the, the whiskey crash shall we say of the uh, early 80s um the, it probably wasn't a difficult decision for diageo to um to basically mothball it uh, i mean well it had been mothballed since about 1930 as far as i'm aware um, and it only just started production again in 1967. So, um, and with Diageo owning both Colila and Lagavulin, they kind of figured out that there was no point in having three Isla distilleries. The two would suffice for uh, for their blends, and so Port Ellen got cut. And it was no different to you know numerous other distilleries that closed in uh, in the 80s. You know, Rosebank, for example. Um, Dallas do being two other ones uh, and it was all purely about money it had absolutely nothing at all to do with you know, the perceived quality of what was being produced at those uh, particular distilleries so um, an ignominious end to the distillery in um, in you know, the uh, um, in the late 80s but of course as you well know although the the, the uh, actual distillery was was dismantled and the the, the car the um, stills were well i don't know where the stills ended up and but as we know it's now basically a maltings it it does pretty much most of the maltings for the distilleries on isla and, and elsewhere and uh, um its name shall we say lives on in the sort of pantheon of uh, of, of distilleries that are long since gone and um as again as you know diageo releases a uh, yearly release uh, I think they're up to the 17th now I think they started in 2000 um, and two grand I mean two grand for a, for a bottle of whiskey I mean the, the problem is that Diageo have got these collectors by the nads basically you know you've started off with the first release which was a fairly modest price from from uh, from memory um, I mean I, I remember chatting to customers you know what uh, mid 2000s and it was then sort of like you know thousand pound odd a bottle and they were saying well I'm not going to carry on it's got too expensive and lo and behold they did but you know two grand for a, for a, for a bottle of whiskey and I, I've read a lot about Port Ellen and about what people think of Port Ellen and you know, the bulk of them I mean I wouldn't want to put a percentage on them but a bulk the bulk of these these bottles are never going to get tasted or unless you're filthy rich shall we say they're, they're in collections and um, I must admit, sort of two years ago when uh, Diageo released the 15th uh, edition, uh, it was from, from 1983, the, the, the last year of production, and um, a lot of people weren't that impressed by it. And to be honest with you, I've tasted a couple from 
1983 and you know I, I surmised that given the fact that it was the last year of production uh, they really ran those stills pretty hard because the, the 83 that I've tasted have not been particularly great spirit whatsoever um, maybe the, the distillery or the, the knew that uh, closure was on the cards and um, it was just a case of let's get the, the, as much spirit out of the uh, the stills as humanely possible before it all uh, for all closes and uh, um, consequently you know quality I I think from from eighty three was is pretty mixed and um, so like I said I thought you know Diageo are pretty much scraping the bottom of the barrel with regards to their stocks of Port Ellen but then lo and behold the next year out comes one from nineteen seventy eight and now the seventeenth release is from nineteen seventy nine and you're thinking well how many more casks have they got they, they can't be that many and obviously you know they will run out at some stage and the price of, of, of Port Ellen will just rocket through the roof I mean you know it's pretty pretty steep now for the uh, the official releases for want of a better word um, but but the sort of the private bottlings are you know you can still pick one up for, for three figures for you know two three hundred pounds possibly uh, but as soon as the stocks have all gone they're, they're going to rock it up and if you have them, some of them in your collection then well you know you, you're going to be quids in shall we say but um, anyway that's not what we're here for. We're not here to discuss the merits of collecting and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave that to other people. If you, I've got no issue with people that wanted to collect things. I mean, you know, we are inherent hoarders, I suppose. We like collections. I mean, I have a collection. I have a collection of a number of things which may or may not be of any great value or other. But you know, it's it's just something you do. You know, um, some people collect stamps. Other people collect whiskey. You know why not i've got no issue with it at all uh, and if you wish to do so then fine you know if you wish to buy it and drink it then well great you know but anyway we're we're here to have a a yap about um what it tastes like really it seems to have had this iconic kind of mythical status um but really what was the spirit like what what did it taste like you know and and from tasting it and i've not tasted a huge amount of them it, it did have a distinctive individual character pretty much like all distilleries and um i'm hoping that these are all going to uh, d display that so like i said only four there was a fifth um it was a, a golden cask uh bottling from the house of Macduff, but there was just such a i mean well, i've got it here in actual fact as you can probably see there was Look, look, blink, and there's a little bit left in there. So I, I did on an R about whether to include that in the tasting, but really there's not enough there to, to barely cover the tongue. So I thought let's let's not bother. So anyway, let's just introduce what I have got to taste today. So, like I said, this these samples, and the, the, in actual fact, the, fact, the last one came from 2014, which bloody well stunned me, it has to be said. Um, I mean, during the sort of, you know, late to sort of, well, sort of mid-2000s, you know, did still, you know, independents were still sending me samples. And so, we're going to kick off with a bottling from Jura Rattray. Uh, this was distilled in 1982 and bottled in 2007. Uh, it was 25 years old, uh, single cask, cask 2466, and bottled at 60.4%. I mean, my God, how tight that cask was. I mean, 60-odd oh, percent at bloody 25 years old. Bloody hell. The second bottling we'll be looking at was bottled for Murray, or bottled by Murray McDavid in their Mission Gold series. This was uh, again distilled in 1982 and bottled in 2009, making it 27 years old. Bottled at 48.6, and as was the one with Murray McDavid back in those days, finished in ex Chateau Ikem casks. So I imagine there's a lot of people. <laughs> went, oh my god you're putting that into that but anyway we shall give it a taste and we shall see if um just and i suppose at the end of the day well why not do something off the wall with a uh, <laughs> with a poor ellen um this third bottling is uh, from uh, the old malt cask range douglas lang's old malt cask um it was distilled a year later in 1983 uh and bottled in 2011 at 50%. I uh, don't know what the cask reference is, um, but there wasn't very many of them 
done. So uh, that's 28 years old. And, um, well, the, there's not a lot of it. And it, it's got a little bit cloudy. So I'm, I, I don't think that that sample is really going to have lasted the, the, the time, shall we say. But we shall cross our fingers and hope. And finally, the last bottling we'll be looking at is a 35-year-old Port Ellen. I hate to think how much this is going to cost you now, if you can get it on the, the, the market. This was uh, another bottling from Douglas Lang, but this was in their Director's Cut range from 1979 and bottled in August of 2014. Uh, one bourbon cask and the reference was 10355, bottled at 51.1. And um, I think I actually stopped some of that. And um, that, I suppose over the years, um, Port Ellen has kind of come and gone and uh, I, I mean, I picked up a few bottles. Um, and uh, some like this, the, the, the AD Rattray one, I kind of kicked myself for not doing so because that was relatively inexpensive, for, if memory serves me correct. But then again, it was 2007. So anyway, um, that's enough of the waffling. I think it's time to start tasting. <laughs> okay, so Port Ellen. Um, from memory, Port Ellen... Um, was never a behemoth peat wise uh, I, I must admit I often tended to sort of you get little bits of, of kind of Bomori violets it often seemed to have a slightly more grittier kind of character to me anyway um, but it certainly had a, a kind of unique character but let's, let's see what those good are saying shall we really fresh uh, quite crisp quite so there's some white fruits it's got a it's got a sort of slightly colilary kind of feel to it. Um, there's a touch of coffee, very lightly um, salty, and, very, and quite lightly peated as well. Not a huge amount of peat. Um, I mean, I'm guessing that, that throughout the distillery's time, it was probably being run a bit like colila in doing a lot of various different peating level spirits. Um, because this certainly is, is, even though, yes, it's 25 years old, um, the peat is actually really quite delicate. It's quite sooty um, with some, some lovely kind of crisp white fruits. Um, I must admit, like I said, it does come across very much like Colila. Um, maybe not quite as robust as Colila, but certainly has that sort of feel to it. Um, and it, it certainly doesn't have that, to me, what I remember kind of classic Port Ellen kind of character. Um, but it's a lovely nose. I mean, it is really fresh and for 25, I mean, you know, the freshness is just astounding, really. Let's, let's see what the palate's like. Oh, it's got some alcohol. Quite woody. Oh, aftertaste those. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, tangerine, apricot. That's a lot of woodiness and it's got a woody kind of peat character. Um, slightly sooty. Ah, a bit of parma violet coming through right on the very end. Um, very lightly salted. Um, again, quite crisp and quite fresh. Um, Mm, that is an absolutely beautiful malt, it has to be said. I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and uh, see what happens. Um, like I said, it, it doesn't kind of scream Port Ellen at me, but then my limited knowledge of Port Ellen is limited. Um, it does have, like I said, that, that sort of Bamori kind of violet you know, Um but like I said, it's a lot fresher. Quite oily now. Um, the fresh element has kind of dropped off a little bit and we're getting more of the kind of the oily spirit character. It's quite dense now. I, I'm, I'm certainly getting a little bit of oak vanilla. A little bit more salt now in actual fact, which is uh, quite surprising. Um, it seems to have sort of, like I say, it's lost its fresh element um, and become sort of bigger, richer. Um, but even so, it's still a lovely nose. 
Let's see what the panel's like now. Now it feels more like Port Allen. It's got that gritty kind of earthy, dusty, cold, dusty, peaty kind of character. Palmer Violets again. Mmm. Mm. But still got that sort of fresh element to it. A bit more salt as well. Wonderful length. Quite oily as well. That is just such a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. And probably that little amount was probably about 50 quid's worth, I imagine. So, um... Mm, I'm, I'm going to enjoy that. Well, I am actually enjoying it. Okay, so let's move on to the Murray McDavid uh, Mission Gold bottling finished in X Chemcast. Let's see what the notice gives us on this. A lot more salty. Um, it's definitely got a slight herbal nature to it which uh, is intriguing there's definitely some dried grape a little bit of honey as well still quite fresh it's got that sort of um, real salty freshness I mean not a surprise I suppose uh, I would guess that this probably didn't move very far from Port Ellen this has probably been a Brocladi for quite quite a number of years before it was bottled so so the the, the fact that it was you know exposed to the Isla air has kind of kept the sort of like the, the lovely saltiness to to the nose again really lightly peated slightly sooty kind of peat wonderful maturity and and the akem cask is not and i i, I kind of found this with a lot of the Murray mcdavid bottlings when they were using akem and white wine finishes they, they weren't ott on the finish the, the white wine sort of never really sort of overpowered the um the spirit unlike sort of you know some of the red wine finishes and the um the port and things like that it just kind of gives it a sort of a delicate kind of like i said sort of grapey honeyness and it's yeah really quite nice again just getting a little bit of of of, of, of violets barley mm, lovely nose let's see what the palette's like Again, it's got that classic kind of woody, earthy kind of dusty peat. Very subtle. Not particularly long. I mean, the, the, the sort of that dusty peat is kind of lingering, but the fruit was, or well, the sort of the, the honey and the sort of semblance, semblance of fruit was quite sort of fleeting, shall we say. Um, and although it felt quite full in, initially, it didn't seem to kind of sort of last too long but yeah, the peatiness kind of lingers the saltiness kind of lingers and it's an absolutely lovely whiskey and um, again I can't remember what we were retailing that for but uh, I mean it wasn't cheap back then I mean um, in 2009 but it's certainly you know nowhere near what the price of Port Ellen is these days and um, yeah yeah that was good that's nice Okay, so let's move on to the uh, Old Malt Cask 28 year old. Let's see what those gives us on this end. As I suspected, it is kind of, it has degraded a little bit, unfortunately, but again, it's got that dusty, earthy, sooty peatiness. It's quite robust. There's a, a little bit of, a little bit of tar. Um, Again, some Palmer violets, although it, it's like I said, it's it has creeped and and you know, like I said, I don't think the sample has kind of you know lasted particularly well. There's a so I'm, I'm kind of trying to ignore the sort of the obvious um, degradation uh, of this particular spirit, um, which is quite difficult. But again it has that kind of classically sort of dusty kind of Port Ellen kind of character and um, yeah let's see what, uh, what the power gives us a 
Yeah, the palette's not showing a huge amount, although it's still showing the Parma violets and quite a bit of citrus as well. Um, again, the peat is very subtle, very dusty. Um, the length is gone. Um, it's just a bit of a shame, really. I, I, I kind of, from from looking at it, I did think that this particular sample was was not going to be showing particularly well, and um, uh, I'm not fortunate. I was proved to be correct, but um, I think sort of when it when it was released, it certainly was again another kind of classic Port Ellen, and um, yeah, although it's, the sample has uh, shot a bit, and, and, and to be honest with you, I, if it had been any other distillery, I would have just looked at the sample and gone, well, that's, that's, that's gone, and chucked it. I mean, you know, just didn't keep enough of it in the bottle, shall we say, uh, which is unfortunate, but um, like I said, when uh, I think that was bottled, that would have been, again, a kind of classic pour. Right, okay, and finally, we're moving on to the director's cut 35 year old. Let's, let's see what nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that is a lovely nose. Aromatic, crisp, citric, white fruits. Again, real salty freshness. Plenty of barley. I'm getting a lot of clean, crisp, fresh barley. There's not a huge amount of peat, it's, it's, it's an almost just an echo of peat, um, really, really delicate, like a, a, like, like a fog of peat, shall we say, it just kind of has that real wispy, ethereal kind of peatiness that you often find with, with very old peated malts. Um, again, there is that slight grittiness, there's that there's a touch of tangerine, Touch a, a little bit of violet, less kind of Parma violet, a more kind of midnighty violet sort of kind of character. I mean, that is a stunning nose. I mean, it's 35 years old and that still has that wonderful freshness. Um, again, you know, I think if they were, I mean, I, 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 I hate to think, I mean, you know, even an independent bottling of, of, of Port Ellen might not quite be two grand but it's certainly going to be about a grand and a half I mean yeah and and they're still popping out I mean Douglas Lang still occasionally bottle them in the old and rare range I don't think they I think long gone are the days where they're going to bottle them in uh, the Providence or the um, you know the the old malt cask range long gone are those days um, they'll only be coming out in the old and rare but oh it's a fabulous nose it's a, a light oiliness as well. I mean, I can see why Port Ellen is revered by by so many people. It is, you know, a lovely whiskey at the end of the day. Um, but you know, there's there's only so much you can spend on a bottle of whiskey unless you're a millionaire or something. But anyway, let's, let's see what the palate's like then, shall we? Gritty, tannic, oily, apricot, a little bit of orange, um, dry violets, uh, lots of kind of slightly coffee tannins. Um, again, it's got that kind of oily, sort of slightly tarry, mouth coating sort of peat. Um, and again, it's not a huge peat monster, um, you wouldn't expect it at this kind of age, but. It just have that wonderful sootiness and it's just clinging to the inside of, of, of my mouth um, mingling with that sort of oil and that kind of character and uh, it's just it's absolutely sublime. I mean the length has gone a little bit uh, I mean it's again sort of never the, never the fruitiest of, of whiskies it has to be said um, and that does kind of like stop fairly abruptly but the sort of like the peak character and the dustiness and the violetiness just just kind of keeps going on and on and on I mean it's just oh that's good <laughs> right okay so let's sum this week's episode of the show up um, 
like I said, this was a, a one and done shot, never to be repeated. Um, yeah, not unless, you know, suddenly get inundated with Port Ellen samples, which is, oh look, I just see a flying pig. Um, <laughs> basically, Port Ellen, um, yeah, a unique whiskey. Whether it's kind of, it's not worth a grand and a half a bottle. Absolutely not. I mean, it's a lovely whiskey. I will give it that. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on it. It's just... I mean, the thing is, it was never destined to be bottled as a single malt. It was always destined just to be a filler, part of a blend. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I've tasted some lovely examples of Port Ellen. I mean, you know, the, the, the AD Rattray, a lovely fresh Port Ellen. Um, I'm sorry, how it's kept that amount of alcohol, I've got no idea. Um, and the, the Murray McDavid, again, lovely whiskey. Um, interesting. It had that kind of classic, to me, gritty, dusty kind of peak character that, uh, that just I associate with, with Port Ellen. Um, I mean, the, the OMC sample was a bit shot, so it was not going to be showing at its absolute best, which was unfortunate, but, you know, um, I did kind of gamble with that particular one. And the Director's Cup bottling, which was, you know, a, a stunning whiskey, really, really good. But there are more complex whiskies out there. There are more complex Islas out there, um, a, a fraction of the price. And yes, OK, if you get the opportunity to try one, it's a bit of history. Um, and you know, at least you can say, well, I've, I've tasted a Port Ellen, and, um, and what the hell's all the fuss about, to be bluntly honest with you. Um, and like I said, if you're going to get hold of yourself a Port Ellen, I really would just avoid anything that was distilled in 1983. I know that's probably being a bit blanketing with, with, with that kind of advice, but um, like I said, the most sort of, um, uh, as I said at the beginning of the show, being the last year of production, I think the quality of what was being produced then was, was pretty variable. So if you're going to get hold of a bottle of Port Ellen, just make sure it doesn't come from 1983. But aside from that, um, there you go. That's that's this week's episode of the show. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, all my glasses are empty. So um, I'll just say goodbye. Wow.